garlic is mistakenly called seed, but it's not a true seed. Garlic, about 1% of the time, these uh, on the hardneck varieties, these flower stalks will produce viable seeds, but virtually no one grows it from seed. They look like little black seeds akin to uh, onions or chives or leeks. So what we do is we call it planting stock. So this is a bulb of a hardneck variety called Chesnock Red. And basically when you're planting garlic, you just take a bulb and each bulb uh, produces cloves. Each clove will become a bulb when you plant it. So I'm gonna break this one apart. I already have some broken up here. And when you're breaking it apart, you have to look, see how that's actually two, because each one of these will become a whole bulb. And down here, you can see there's tiny, this is called the basal plate, it's spelled B-A-S-A-L. So it's at the base of the clove. And so here's how it, it grows. A green shoot will form in there that will become the garlic plant. So keep growing here and here you can see the basal plate from the old bulb each one of those was a clove there and roots down here we don't need this part this was a hardneck variety so you can see the uh, remaining stock so now i have a bunch of cloves and one thing that's good to understand people sometimes get confused like oh which end goes up or down most plants, almost all plants, the shoot is heliotropic. It's going to grow toward the sun, and the roots are geotropic. They're going to grow down towards the earth. So even if you planted them upside down, they would figure it out. But you'd have weird curved, like this hard neck. What, what would happen if you planted it upside down is these, you know, so it would be like this, but the stalk would grow um, in reverse. So I have a bed prepared here and I have a dog tamping it down. I like to give my garlic room to uh, grow because garlic is a fairly inefficient feeder and uh, it needs room for its roots to spread out. It doesn't like competition. And one of my teachers one time said, you can grow garlic or you can grow weeds, but you can't grow both. So you gotta make sure you've got plenty of fertility. We've, we've fertilized this with composted manure already and we've raked it out and it's a nice planting bed. So I typically plant them about eight to 12 inches apart, uh, depending on the variety you're growing, but that's a pretty safe bet. If you have really fertile soil, like you're growing in a raised bed, you could plant it eight inches apart. Any closer than that, and I feel like the plants are competing uh, for nutrients and also light. Uh, so you wanna give them room. So what I do is I'll first just, like on a bed like this, I think, I could probably get four rows. And for me, again, everybody's hand is different. This is nine inches. So if I'm planting them 10 inches apart, if, if that's hard for you, you could maybe make a planting stick. So I lay them out first. And then over here on this side. So first I lay them out on the bed and then I come through and push them in. And the reason I lay it out first, instead of going ahead and planting them as I go along, is this helps me to ensure that my spacing is, is appropriate. Also, I, for myself, I like it if a bed ends all at the same thing, instead of, you know, maybe I get all the way down there and then I realize I don't have enough to plant the other side and have an uneven bed. So, and then when it comes time for planting them, I'll jump back over here. You just take them and pretty much, they're much like other seeds that you plant them twice as deep as they are long. So if the clove is about an inch, I wanna plant it with about two inches of soil above it. So that rule actually applies for carrots, peas, corn, just about anything. So now I'm taking them and just shoving them in with my thumb. Uh, depending on your soil, you may need to, you know, rake over it. But these, these are pretty good. So just go along like so. I think you get the idea. It's not very hard. And then, so we're again planting in October is ideal. You can plant all the way into November, but sometimes your soil is going to be too wet. Plant it, and then 
all mulch with straw or if you don't really usually want to use hay because it's got weed seeds in it um, and that helps keeps the weeds down and you it'll just kind of sit here over the winter it won't do a lot of growth over the winter but in case you're doubting it you can dig in there and you'll see it'll be growing roots before a shoot comes up some of the hardneck varieties if you plant them in October you may not even see anything above the ground until January but then when the warmer weather and longer days of February come it grows rapidly and then usually by May you have you know good sized garlic plants and then as we approach the summer solstice that's when bulbing happens and the uh, it pretty much is like a scallion at first or almost like a leek and then the the bulb begins to form as we get close to the summer solstice and past the summer solstice so you got to keep it weeded and then also watered once for us the rains stop sometime in May or June so we need to irrigate it because as I mentioned it's a fairly inefficient root system it doesn't spread far like the way corn does and then we typically are harvesting right around end of June into halfway through July and what we look for and I don't have a fresh garlic plant here but a, a good way to understand the way garlic grows is you can see where the leaves used to be on here here's a dried leaf each leaf is a bulb wrapper so see here this paper that actually was a leaf my indication of when to harvest is when the leaves are beginning to dry down tur turning yellow and kind of a buff brown but I want a minimum of four to five green leaves left so that when I'm cleaning the garlic uh, when it's at this stage that I, I we don't want it to wind up like this because that will impair storage we want it to have a nice bulb wrapper so you want to have some green leaves at the time of harvest and then we hang it up or lay it out in a shady place to dry and then once the tops are dry, much like this, you can clip it, or with the soft neck fries, you can braid it. We trim off the roots, set aside what you need for seed, and that's it. Uh, it is just, it's a miracle of nature how garlic grows and then uh, goes dormant and then grows again. It's almost ever living, if you will. So hopefully you learned a few things about growing garlic and you're gonna be successful. Uh, sourcing disease-free stock is really valuable. I know here at Siskiyou Seeds that we send off samples to uh, the OSU pathology lab to make sure that we're not spreading any disease because some garlic diseases like white rot and botrytis will stay in your soil and affect uh, not only subsequent crops of garlic but also onions and leeks or shallots or chives. So you got to be careful about that and you know acquire your garlic from a reputable source and then once you do that save your own seed and you'll save a lot of money on it and get familiar with the wonderful world of garlic so best of luck to you on all of your growing endeavors <laughs>